Hi guys, I'm Matt Evers. I'm here having tea with Wilma, and we're here talking about the play Up For A Meet. I come from Minnesota, uh, which is way up north by Canada. A lot of people think I'm Canadian because I do have a bit of a Canadian twang. Uh, but no, I am American, sorry to say. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been in the UK on and off now for about eight years. Um, I've been uh, doing Dancing on Ice, which is a big show on ITV, for the past seven years. Um, hopefully we will be going into our eighth season this year. Um, my career has spanned uh, loads of television, theater, Broadway, LA, New York, um, the soap operas, pretty much anything and everything within entertainment. Um, I love uh, I love the industry. Um, I've been in it since I was a kid. I did some commercial modeling when I was um, you know a, a child, uh, which then led into some other TV things, acting commercials, um, and then spent a couple of years in New York uh, doing the soap. The soap thing. Um, I actually skated on Broadway with the Radio City Christmas Musical, um, which kind of got me into theater um, and sort of wanting to do a little bit more of that. Went to LA, did a couple of independent films. Didn't really like the film industry all that much just because it takes a really long time um, and I get bored quite easily. Um, and then I was in General Hospital for two years, which is a big American soap opera. Um, then our union went on strike, which is the Screen Actors Guild, um, or otherwise known as SAG. And there were pretty much all the studios shut down. It was the summer of 2005. And I got a very random phone call from an English lady um, saying that she had got my name from Christopher Dean, um, obviously the Olympic ice skater, and wanted to see if I was interested in partaking in and participating in a new reality show that they were doing here in the UK. At that point, I was out of work, I had gone back to bartending, I thought, great opportunity, combine both of my strengths, you know, being a competitive skater when I was a kid, um, and leaving the sport when I was 21, um, going into TV, la 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 la, um, yeah, came over for the first series of Dancing on Ice, nobody knew what to expect, we didn't think we were going to get through maybe the first three weeks, and the ratings came back, and it was an absolute smash hit, and the rest is history. Um, since I've been in the UK, um, I've been sort of expanding a lot of my presenting stuff. Um, working for the Food Network quite a bit lately. Um, I'm not a chef, but I do cook quite a bit. Um, doing a lot of presenting for, I've done some stuff with Channel 5, um, as well ITV itself with This Morning. Um, I just finished judging the Miss Senior Citizens UK competition, uh, which was actually really inspiring. Um, and yeah, just kind of working. You know, I think as an actor or somebody that works in the entertainment industry, that's all you can hope for and that's all you can ask for, is to continue to work. I came about um, up for a meet with this play, um, just kind of to break the mold of what I think I've been doing in the UK and my profile. I wanted to try something different. I wanted to get my feet wet back on the stage to sort of see if that's maybe where my career can go. I think within the entertainment industry, the, the industry itself, selects where it wants you. You can have a goal and a mission and you you know might want to go to that place, but I think there are you know paths along the way that um, sort of push you uh, you know into a different avenue. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited to get on the stage and and get my kid off. Up for me is about um, well, I'd like to I'd like to say it's it's the perfect cross between Will and Grace, Friends, and Grinder, if you know what Grinder is. Um, I'm not personally on Grinder. I actually had to be educated on that when we got to the first couple of days of rehearsal. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's revolves around a dating uh, online dating scene. Um, kind of the dangers behind it as well. Uh, and you know the moral of the story, if there's a moral, is that you know you do have to be very very careful with false profiles and things like that on online dating. Um, but it is a great laugh. We've been laughing so hard in rehearsals, just pretty much at ourselves and what happens on stage. Um, that yeah, I'm really excited to get out there and, and start performing. Um, Up for me is going to be at Waterloo East Theatre. Uh, we open, I believe our press night is going to be the 6th or the 7th 
um, of September, and then we will be up and running for three weeks from the 7th or 8th of September. Given the choice of five words, um, that's not one of them. I would say I'm a geek. I'm an absolute nerd. Uh, I get bored very easily. That's probably already five, sorry. But no, I like to keep things fresh. Um, I'm always wanting to learn new things as well um, about myself, about the world. I think it's very important that you continue to learn throughout your life. And fun. I just, I, life is about having fun, you know, and that's, that's what I'm here to do. That's probably about 35. I do have a couple of pre-show rituals that I do before pretty much any performance. A couple of them are secret um, and have been secret for um, pretty much my entire career, especially the skating ones, which my skating partners that I've had in the past are let in on it because you kind of have to do it together. Um, but the other ones, I mean, you do a normal vocal warm-up or a physical warm-up, depending upon if you're skating or if you're on stage or whatever. Um, and then just say a little prayer, you know, I just, I want to be thankful to the universe that, you know, I've been given the opportunity to do this. So yeah, that's about it. I think some of the most funny things that have gone on being on stage and especially on the, the stage of ice with Dancing on Ice um, I mean, people, we, we wear these guards, these plastic guards that you wear over your blades so you can walk around backstage. Uh, it protects the floor, but it also protects your blades. Um, some of the most funny, the funniest things have been when people forget to take their guards off before they step onto the ice. And they become, either if it's the celebrity or the professional, you instantly become Bambi and you are flat on your ass. Um, so we get a couple of those every, every season of Dancing on Ice. Um, we also, on the end of our blades, we have toe picks, uh, which are those jagged little teeth looking things uh, at the, the front of the blade. And I can remember uh, performing with Suzanne Shaw, um, I think we were at Wembley, and we were coming around the circle quite fast, and it was just this really super easy step, touch, step, touch uh, movement on the circle. And I ended up, I caught my toe pick and fell flat on my face in front of however many 10,000 people or something. And we both absolutely corpsed. Couldn't finish the routine. It was it was one of the most funniest things. So this year alone, which when I skated with Georgie Porter, I got the blade in my in my forehead. We were doing the a move that's called the neck spin, where her feet are um, sort of wrapped around my neck, and her body goes out this way, her head at that end. Um, and as she was stepping through with her blade, uh, she just misjudged it and caught me square in between the eyes. Um, that's the last thing I remember about it. I've obviously seen the footage. I put her down on the ice. I skated over to the side. Karen Barber was there um, to help me get me into physio. And I basically came to when I was in physio. Um, so, but ITV took care of us, or took care of me quite well. Sent me to a plastic surgeon and had it taken care of right away. I will say the Wellington Hospital is incredible in St. John's Wood. I was in there taking them all the toiletries. It was all Molten Brown and Joe Malone, and I was like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> you know, paid. They definitely paid uh, paid for the the hospital at that point, but it was well worth it because there's there's no scar. I mean, it was the doctor was incredible. This is the second time that I've been kicked <laughs> kicked in the face. Suzanne Shaw kicked me right here. Um, we were doing a handstand on a chair, if I remember correctly, and her legs came back too far, and I was supposed to swoop in and then pick her up, kind of a back roll type of move. And her, her blade caught me right here, and I probably should have learned at that point, but hey, how it goes with the work, you know. I have not tried online dating. Um, I have a couple of friends who are on it, um, and I actually have a really good friend back home uh, in the States who has met her husband on online dating. I wouldn't object, you know, to online dating. I just, I think with where I am in my career and everything, it's just, I don't have time to see some of my friends, let alone, you know, have a partner and, you know, go online and do all of that stuff. Like if I'm at the computer, it's literally, I'm doing emails, I'm scheduling, um, you know, things like that. I'm Skyping with my family back home, because, um, you know, they, they, they live, it's an eight hour time difference. So 
I pretty much in the middle of the night is when I talk to all my friends back at home, let alone, you know, as well as my family. I think after working on this play and really kind of getting into what happens within the world of online dating, it, I don't know if I ever would do it now. It's, it, it's, it's a weird virtual world, if you know what I mean. And it's, you can even equate it to when you're, you're texting somebody your inhibitions come down. You're, it's so much easier to talk to somebody via text, but it's not necessarily real. Um, you know, I, I hate texting conversations. I mean, if, if you want to talk to me, pick up the phone, call me, um, because you get that, the persona back and forth, you know, the conversation, the feeling, uh, the feeling is there. So I think the whole online dating world, obviously it's with that first meeting, you will know instantly, but you know, if you're scheduling a blind date with somebody or talking to somebody for weeks or months on end via a website, you just, you know, you never know. Right now, I think any shows that are on, I would, I love Wicked. Um, if I could play Fiero, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, I just need to work on my singing. I will be very honest. And I, I am doing that because I think, you know, he's... If you're going to work in a, an arena, you know, you do have to um, keep up with, with all the skills that, that might be thrown at you. You know, you don't want to walk into an audition and, and somebody say, hey, can you sing this? You know, oh no, I don't sing. Well, then you're out. You know what I mean? And I, I actually have had a couple of auditions to where um, I showed up and I forgot the lyrics. Yeah, it was probably the most embarrassing thing. And I actually just said, thank you very much. Have a nice day. And I walked out. <laughs> One of my first shows that I ever saw on Broadway, actually two of them that I'd like to see come back. Um, I saw Julia Andrews in Victor Victoria, which was unbelievable. It was my first ever Broadway theater experience and I had no idea what to expect. And I remember walking in being like, is this it? The theater was tiny, the sets were small, you know, but then as soon as they come on stage, it's just like, bam, the energy came out from it. Um, and it's, so Victor Victoria for one, and then Aida. And I saw Heather Headley um, in Aida on Broadway. And I've just, I saw the poster yesterday that she's coming into town for The Bodyguard. And I am so excited to see her. I'm a massive fan of hers, um, God, for probably 15 years, 20 years now. Um, that, yeah, it's gonna be, I hope it's gonna be good. It will be good. Definitely theater etiquette uh, it needs to be discussed. I think, you know, it sh there should be like a big placard on the front of, you know, any, any theater as you go in or a voiceover that comes in, a PA. Um, rappers, really loud, you know, whatever, crinkly rappers. Um, go to the toilet before, you, before Act 1 and obviously before Act 2. Don't come to a show pissed. You know what I mean? Like, I understand if you want to go have a good night or whatever, but keep it in moderation because it's, you know, especially if you've got that embarrassing drunk friend that everybody does and they make a fool of themselves halfway, you know, halfway through the show. Obviously phones, I don't think you even need to discuss that. And just talking, you know what I mean? It's just people are working and people are on stage. Um, you know, I think if, you, if you're not appreciating what's going on, then go, you know what I mean? And I, I, I've left shows before, or I've left a, a cinema before. I mean, and it's, people understand that it may not, may not be your cup of tea, but to be rude in the fact, or when somebody's working, I think is, is it's been uncalled for. There's two, uh, and for two very different reasons. Suzanne Shaw, uh, who I won with on series three, um, she is one of my best friends. Uh, we instantly hit it off from the beginning. <clears throat> and still to this day, we're four years on now, I think. We still talk on a daily basis, um, hang out all the time. Um, she, I saw her in Chicago probably when she went in uh, to the West End. I probably saw her 20 times. Just a massive fan of hers on, in her professional world, you know, in what she really does. Um, and then Denise Welch who I skated with the year before last, who, she's far too young to be my mother, but she has a very motherly uh, sort of um, take. Our, our relationship is very, is very uh, like that. 
Um, she's opened a lot of doors for me, has introduced me to some great people. Um, you know, and she's really, she saw something in me outside of my ice skates, I think, that other people, you know, uh, hadn't, and has really, really pushed me, and kind of helped my career, you know, because obviously dancing on ice isn't going to last forever, and you've got to kind of look down the road of what might be next, and, you know, which I think this play for me is, is sort of helping, you know, break that mold, and really getting a feel for what I want, you know, and what I, what I want to be next. Um, I've got two shows that are running on the Food Network right now, um, which we just found out actually a couple weeks ago that we were the number one lifestyle rated uh, Freeview channel, which is a long accolade, but it's, it's still number one. Um, yeah, I've got a Made With Love series where we do like home cooking, uh, foods that make you feel good, um, martinis that make you feel good as well. Uh, we go get into all of that. And then I have a barbecue series, which is obviously perfect for the summer. And we've had a pretty decent summer this, this year, so I've got tons of barbecue tips on there. Um, how to cook on the barbecue, what to cook, how to you know, prepare things, uh, stuff like that. So I've got that going. Um, and then, yeah, watch the space for Dancing on Ice.